This screencast is devoted to flux integrals. It's the final kind of surface integrals that we'll consider. So here uh, is an example problem, I think, to illustrate pretty well um, the concepts involved. You're asked to compute the flux of the following vector field, so some specified vector field in three dimensions, through the unit hemisphere, uh, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equal 1, z is um, positive, in the upward direction. So in this case, the geometry isn't so interesting, but nevertheless, let me just go ahead and quickly sketch it. So we have um, unit hemisphere. So there you go, x, y, z. I'm um, just to remind you the ideas involved. So this is our surface S. And in addition to the surface, we're given this vector field. And I don't think I will attempt to, to draw it. The x component is, is fixed at 1 y component depends on x and the z component depends on z. Um, I'll just indicate um, that there is a vector field here. There are vectors everywhere in R3 with, um, with these components and we're interested in computing the flux of that vector field through this surface and in the upward direction. And that upward direction will come as a, a choice between one of two normal directions in just a moment. And so just to remind you what these surface integrals are. So the flux then is, by definition, the integral over the surface of this vector field dotted into the normal to the surface, ds. This is where this uh, unit normal is the one that is in the upper direction. I guess I'll just leave that on there. The way we're going to evaluate that is we're going to use a parameterization, and I'll ind indicate it as a double integral over some parameterization. Of, and then to recall that this will be v dot, and then we'll have these derivatives, dr du cross dr dv, dv dv. All right, so that's how we simply have to evaluate this expression. Uh, first, we have to come up with the parameterization, and then uh, evaluate this expression. Clearly, in this case, you have a, a hemisphere. You're going to work in spherical coordinates yet again. I will go ahead and use theta and phi, the standard ones, is a unit hemisphere, so the radius is 1, so we'll simply have here sine phi cosine theta and sine phi sine theta comma cosine phi. All right, so this is the usual coordinates with a radius 1, so it's a unit hemisphere, and we need to specify that theta then will go from naught to 2 pi and phi will be from naught to pi on 2. Okay, it's this pi on 2 which limits us to the upper upper hemisphere here. So I think I'll skip uh, some of the steps and just uh, let you work out or go back and look at previous screencasts and examples that dr d phi cross dr d theta will give you sine squared phi cosine theta in the i hat direction. Similar, I'm just going to have to write them like this, sine squared phi sine theta in the j hat direction, and then plus cosine phi sine phi in the k hat direction. And again, if you were now going to do a, a surface integral, not a flux integral, you would now take the magnitude of this. We no longer have to do that in this case. But what we do have to do is take the dot product of this vector with our vector field. So let's uh, we have to evaluate our now our vector field in terms of the parameterization. That's to say we have to write this, so let's just do it. We have to write v in terms of our parameterization. So the first component is just i hat as a constant. Now x, x is sine phi cosine theta. So what I've done is this x here, I've used the, the x in spherical coordinates to evaluate it. And then uh, z is cosine phi. So that, that now is our vector field expressed in um, our parameterization, that's the same spherical coordinates. So we simply have to take now the dot product of, of these two vectors. i dot i gives us, uh, so we'll have sine squared phi cosine theta plus, now we have a sine, so it looks like sine cubed phi cosine theta sine theta, and I'll continue here, plus cosine squared phi sine phi. So again, it's a scalar. The dot product of two vectors is a scalar. And that now is our integrand. And we have to integrate it over the range given by our parameterization. OK, so we're ready to write down the integral. Um, 
so put theta on the outside naught to 2 pi phi naught to pi on 2 of this whole expression d phi d theta what's going to be best to do is you'll see that each of these is the sum of three terms and each term separates the the phi's and the thetas uh, separate so let's I'm going to write it as a sum of three separated integrals right that is this one plus plus I haven't left anything out yet we just have a quick uh, look see here uh, shouldn't this should be a cubed that looks to be correct okay I could see right away to, to write it this way because look you, you should know right away the integral from not to 2 pi of, of cosine that simply will give me a zero so this whole first term will be zero now here too you should immediately see that this is one half of sine of 2 theta and the integral over that over um, 0 to 2 pi is also equal to zero so that also vanishes and that gives me down to here and uh, now we have a nice situation. I'll go back to white. This is simply, of course, 2 pi. Now we have something we can easily integrate. 2 pi on 3. Okay, so that's the answer. Oh, and I forgot to say something. All right, so there's nothing so interesting in the answer. Uh, again, it's the, way, um, it's the way we set up the problem. Again, it's particularly that you have to, the flux integral is by definition this, and the way you evaluate it is by um, working with your parameterization, computing this cross product, which will now be a vector, you don't take its norm, and taking this dot product and integrating away. Hopefully you can do all the integrals. Now something I think I didn't say here was, um, and let me emphasize that now, is that, see here we were told that the this has to be in the upwards direction. I just said we have to choose this n to be in the upwards direction. But then I didn't verify that this, that this vector here uh, was going to be in the upwards direction. You, um, what dictates that or determines that is this here and um, for this range of phi between naught and, and pi on 2 this is always positive and so the, 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 this, uh, this normal vector it's not a unit normal vector uh, actually maybe it is in this case since, uh, since it's a unit sphere um, anyway this normal vector it points upwards so I'll draw, draw it in yellow this normal vector at any particular point, uh, let me draw it up here, will point, will point upwards um, in all cases. And so um, so that was the right choice. We didn't have to put in a minus sign. If you'd asked, let's just say this, if you'd been asked to compute the, the flux through this in the downwards direction, you computed this vector, you'd have to put in um, a minus sign. You'd have to multiply basically your whole answer by a minus one. Again, it will only it, it, there's only a question of a plus or minus sign. Anyway, that's I'm only I'm only going to do one example on flux integrals, and that's it. They're all pretty much the same. Um, it's just this this product you have to with this top product you have to work out.